Hey guys, welcome. Any consumer product that is manufactured or created must be tested before selling or deploying and semiconductor chips are no exception. In this video, we will try to understand some of the basics of design for testability. Before going to the details, let's understand what do we really mean by when we say design for testability. Test engineers usually have to construct test vectors after the design is completed because the testing always happens when the design is manufactured. Testing invariably requires enormous amount of time and effort. Also, there is no guarantee that we will get a better coverage. To resolve this issue, if the testing is considered at the earlier phase of the design or design cycle, we can make the design more testable. As a result, in modern technology, the integration of design and test has happened. And this is referred to as design for testability. In a sense, design for testability does not deal with testing. It deals with making the design better testable. Semiconductor test costs have been steadily growing. Test costs now amount to 40% of overall product cost. Also, the product quality and the yield could drop significantly if these chips are not designed for testability and thoroughly tested. Nowadays, new problems encountered in semiconductor testing are being recognized quickly. But VLSA technologies drive the test technologies. More effective test technologies are key to success in today's competitive market because they, they reduce this design time significantly. The field of design for testability is a mature one today. And also the test cost can be significantly reduced by inserting DFT at the early phase of the design. Let's understand why on earth DFT is so important. If you consider the yield equation, yield is nothing but the number of acceptable parts per the total number of parts fabricated. Now, how do we decide this is an acceptable part and this is not an acceptable part? It's by testing. And if testing goes wrong, we, we may end up being two situations. A faulty device appears to be a good part passing the test. A good device fails the test appear, appears as faulty. Both are really bad. And these are outcomes of poorly designed test or the lack of design for testability. Now let's understand some of the challenges in VLSI testing what could go wrong and what kind of defects can we have. The physical implementation of VLSI device is a very complicated one. At the time of recording this video, it's N5 of TSMC, 5 nanometer technology and below are the latest technologies. So at this stage of technology node, it's a very, very complicated process consisting of at least 15 to 20 metal layers with interlayer dielectrics in between and base layer consisting of extremely tiny transistors of nanoscale. A small piece of dust or abnormality or geometrical shape can result in a defect. And defects are caused by either process variations or random localized manufacturing imperfections. I'll try to list some of these. Process variations are the variations which happen every time. It is not always true that we will get 100% equal manufacturing everywhere. So these process variations cannot be made absolutely perfect, right? So the transistor channel length variations, the threshold voltage variations of the transistors, metal interconnect width and thickness, in layer dielectric thickness, these all will impact logical and timing performance. The random localized imperfections are restricted to some local area. This can result in either opens or shards or improper via formations or etc. In advanced technology nodes below 7 nanometer or so, the manufacturing defects are increasing significantly. Now let's understand what is testing and how it is done. Testing typically consists of applying a set of stimuli to the inputs of the circuit under test, or CUT, while analyzing the output responses. The circuits that produce the correct response for all the input stimuli or input vector pass the test and are considered to be fault-free. Those circuits that fail to produce the correct response at any point during the test sequence are assumed to be faulty. In fact, the testing is performed at various stages of life cycle of VLSI design, be it VLSI development process or manufacturing process. But do not assume the design verification as testing. It's not testing. The verification is different and the testing is different. But the testing happens once the fabrication has happened, which is the way for testing. Packaging can also introduce some issues because the pa packaging is also not perfect. Once the packaging is done, we have to go for pack package test. And after that, once the packaging is done, we will go to something called quality assurance, which is the final test, which can confirm that the 
product is working. Now in this video, I'll introduce some of the DFT techniques, but I'll not go deep into this. The DFT techniques which are generally available today generally fall into one of the following categories which are listed here below either ad hoc dft techniques or level sensitive scan design or scan designs or the built-in self-test the ad hoc method was the first dft techniques introduced in the 1970s the goal was this it was target only those portions of the circuit that would be difficult to test and add a circuitry to improve the controllability or observability that's why the name ad hoc wherever it's required put some logic so that we can make them more controllable the level sensitive scan design is basically latch based that's why it's called level sensitive scan design is currently the most popular structured dft approach it is implemented by connecting selected storage elements or flip-flops of a design into multiple shift registers called scan chains to provide them with external access also you can assume it as if in a flip-flop based scan design an extra logic is added to each flip-flop to improve testability finally the built-in self-test built-in self-test was proposed around 1980 to integrate a test pattern generator or tpg and an output response analyzer in the VLSI device perform testing internal to the IC. Because the test circuitry resides within the circuit under test, PIST can be used at all levels of testing, be it wafer level testing or system level testing or package level testing, we can use it for anything. I would like to end this video by giving a final remark that a VLSI design is not only designed for manufacturing or power performance area and some other requirements like reliability noise and other issues it also should be concerned with testability as well and that's the reason why we have something called design for testability i haven't discussed many important topics like boundary scan insertion and scan chains and models fault models and several other stuff of this dft it's just a simple introduction to what exactly the design for testability is i hope you got some idea about what dft is and why we need it thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you in the next video and bye bye